works for us. What works for you may be different, and I think, quite frankly, we and others use different stents for different indications. But when we're trying to uh, treat an acute perforation or a fistula, we found this stent to be superior in, in our uh, experience. It's, it's silicone coated polyester or plastic. It's non-permeable. It's very easy to reposition either at the time of deployment or it can be removed, reloaded, and placed back in at the same time so you don't throw it in the trash and start over. It does have substantial radial force, which for these indications I think is a good thing. It does not fracture and it's easily removed. So at the time of fluoroscopy, we mark the proximal and the distal margins of what we want to cover with the stent. I like to use endotracheal tube stylets, which are these radiopaque lines because they're ready, readily available in our operating room. And we simply correlate externally these markers with the endoscope and we tape those in place. Here you see the Polyflex stent on its delivery device. It goes over a wire. We start to deploy it. You can see that this, these beads here are the distal end of the stent opening, and it opens distal to proximal. And we are covering the area we want to cover. Here it's completely deployed. And here we've removed the delivery device. After the stent is placed, we look down in the esophagus again with a flexible scope. We like to make sure that the stent is well seated and that there are no kinks in it which would obscure the lumen. We do go through the stent and we like to see the stent just like this above the GE junction. Another important point I think and why we like to have control of these patients is we treat them like they had an esophageal perforation. They're usually in the ICU at least overnight. We're very aggressive in resuscitating them as, as you would any other patient directed antibiotic therapy, respiratory support if needed. Obviously, they're MPO at this point. We use proton pump inhibitors. We have the uh, PEG to drainage, and we initiate nutrition as soon as possible. In general, we get an esophagram about 48 hours after the stent is placed. If that uh, shows no evidence of continued leak, we'll start them on clear liquids and advance them to a, basically a, a soft mechanical diet. And they're discharged when drains are removed if they have any drains such as chest tubes. We like to remove the stent at about two to four weeks in the operating room again with general anesthesia and we do an esophagoscopy before and after. So I want to briefly review the three series uh, from our institution uh, and what we've found these are small series. We purposely have not combined them into one large series because I think that makes it very hard to compare apples to apples. So for fairly unusual problems, we, I think we have reasonable numbers at least to, to say in our practice that this, this, is, this is good. Uh, the, the first series that we looked at based on that 14-year-old uh, case is um, esophageal fistula. And we had 21 people in this series. Mean age was 58 years. They had undergone all at least one attempted uh, repair operatively. So these are not people who we just put the stent in because they had a fistula. Most of these people had had one or two uh, repairs at another facility, and then we inherited them. Uh, 20 of 21 needed associated procedures to drain infected areas. Um, 20 of 21 had their fistula occluded with the stent. The length of stay after stent placement, after stent placement, was 12 days mean. We did have five stents that migrated for a rate of 24 percent, and we had one mortality. The mortality was the same patient that did not occlude with the stent, and that was a gentleman who had had a descending uh, thoracic graft, which was infected, replaced with a homograft, developed a fistula, and then unfortunately uh, died of that while in the hospital. <coughs> Excuse me. The next series we looked at um, were iatrogenic perforations. We, we thought that would be a good way to look at perforations because these are usually smaller perforations, usually earlier recognized. 
We had 17 patients in that series, mean age of 54 years. Uh, they were not diagnosed as early as you would hope, interestingly, when you looked at this, and I think part of that was travel time uh, to our center. A much lower number needed associated procedures because, again, the majority of them were uh, NPO after whatever procedure had caused their perforation. 16 to 17 patients had their perforation sealed with the stent. Their length of stay was eight days, mean. Three patients stent migrated, and we had no mortalities in that series. So we then thought about another population, which at least in our state is harder to treat, uh, and th those are the spontaneous esophageal perforation patients. We just presented this at the STS a few weeks ago. It is not uh, published yet. We, we are hopeful, if Dr. Edmonds is out there. Um, <laughs> 19 patients, a younger mean age, about 22 hours between what we thought was the event and stent placement. Almost 50% needed something done, either a VATS pleural drainage or, or something to that effect. 17 of 19 patients sealed their perforation. The two that did not had extens uh, extension of the perforation onto the stomach that was not recognized at the time of stent placement or we would not have placed the stent, we would have just operated on those patients. Their length of stay was nine days. We had four patients whose stent migrated and we had no mortalities in that series. Interestingly, almost 50% had associated alcohol ingestion at the time or surrounding their, their uh, spontaneous perforation. Almost 40% were obese. Almost 70% had mediastinitis at the time of diagnosis, and three had frank sepsis, which is different than our other two series. So these patients were fairly sick. So based on those three series, our current practice has found that leaks and fistulae can effectively be treated in quite a few of these patients, not every patient, certainly, but in quite a few of these patients with this hybrid technique. We generally see rapid sealing of the leak. We see them uh, with early oral nutrition and hydration. We think it's an excellent alternative to reoperative repair. So you've repaired it once, it didn't work, and now you're looking at, an, at a third potential surgery, diversion or esophagectomy. And we've not done a head-to-head -head 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 comparison, but it would certainly seem in our experience that their hospital stays are shorter. Stent migration is certainly a problem, and I think it depends on your practice and your philosophy um, as to how you can minimize that. We still like the polyflex stent for these patients. One reason is when it migrates, it does not migrate into the small bowel. It's too big, so we're not fishing these out of the duodenum or, as I've heard from other people, uh, operatively removing them from the jejunum. Um, we have found that if we oversize the stent somewhat in width, but certainly in length, we've been able to reduce our migration rate. And we've learned that if the stent migrates at about seven to ten days, it may well be because the perforation is healed, and that should be investigated. I'll leave you with one final quick case, um, which is another uh, real interesting case home to us in our practice, an 86-year-old in, in one form or another. An 86-year-old lady um, presents to the emergency department about 11 o'clock on a Friday night. She's had an upper endoscopy at a gastroenterologist's freestanding clinic, and she's got chest pain afterwards. She's followed by a pulmonologist for COPD. Her FEV1 was 38% about a year ago when that was last checked. She's on steroids. Um, you can't get a hold of the gastroenterologist, but the piece of paper she has says that there's a mass in the mid-esophagus that's likely malignant, and she is severely kyphotic. We placed a polyflex stent in her, as well as a peg. On Monday, we did a repeat esophagram. Uh, there was no leak. 
She was begun on a diet and went home.